You guys, I sold the Golden Goose. This is everything that sold in the month of August, how my numbers were as a full-time reseller. Hi everyone, and welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you are new here. My name is Aralia, otherwise known as Marty Chick, and I am a full-time fashion reseller. I make a ton of reselling and business content here on YouTube, so tips, hauls, and everything in between. If you guys are interested in more content just like this, be sure to click the little subscribe button down below, and also hit the notification bell so that way you're updated every single time I post a new video. If you guys are new here, I make these videos monthly just to keep you guys updated with everything that's going on in my full-time reselling journey. Last month, my number one goal was just to stay consistent as well as raise my ASP and lower my cost of goods. So let's jump into this video. It's going to be a little bit more comprehensive. I'm going to jump into some what solds later on. And then finally, at the end of this video, I will be sharing with you exactly how much I made, how much I sold, and also what my goals will be for September. So let's talk a little bit about last month's goals. If you watched that video, you know that I made just over three grand in the month of July. My goal for this past month was also to just stay consistent with that goal because if you are a reseller, a content creator, anyone that's on YouTube, you know that your income can be variable. So I really just wanted to see if I could stay consistent with last month's numbers. The second thing that I wanted to accomplish this last month was raising my ASP to $40 an item. This is my average sales price, which means that I would have to sell each and every item for an average of $40 if that wasn't already self-explanatory. Um, and then also I was going to be taking on consignment clients via the app Flip and I was going to see if this could be another form of income for me. Jumping right into what sold, I have my phone here with me today and I'm going to be putting some screenshots up next to me so you can see exactly the items I'm talking about. So I'm going to be mentioning 10 of my best sales this month and three of my worst. I used to only do five, but as sales have started getting more consistent, better and better, I really just want to show you guys a comprehensive list of different things and different categories that are selling well for me. So starting in order here, the first and the best sale that I had of this past month was a Ted Baker cashmere coat. If you guys follow me, I did put this on my Instagram stories when I found it. This was over the summer. I sold this item for $169. $9. I paid $2 for it at the bins and I made a total of $133.20. This was definitely a more rare find for me because usually I can't find high-end goods like this with the tags still on them, but this item was truly extraordinary for me and I'm so excited that it went home to a great buyer. The second item that sold this past month were finally, what well, you guys want to know, the Golden Goose sneakers. So in my previous video that I made of my TJ Maxx yellow tag sale haul, I had found a pair of Golden Goose sneakers. A lot of you actually were mad that I didn't put in the prices because you really want to know what I paid for the sneakers. However, I wanted to sell them before I revealed the price because number one, I don't want a buyer to be upset with me that I bought these for cheaper, but also they know I'm a reseller. But second, I didn't want to lower the resale value of that item. So if you don't know already, TJ Maxx is a closeout store. So if Golden Goose has extra pairs of sneakers that they haven't sold from the past season that they need to get rid of, they'll sell them at a loss to the closeout stores. I got the last pair of sneakers that they had had in the entire store, and that's why they were also on the yellow tag sale and final markdown price. So keep that in mind when I'm telling you guys this. I still think that this was a wonderful sale for me and they actually had sold already in a couple of days. I'd gotten a ton of offers on these so they're still really hot. If you guys can find these at a decent price, I absolutely would purchase them. The Golden Goose sneakers sold for $340 and I had paid $189. This means that I made a total profit after fees of $83 on these sneakers. Now I will say this is not a ton of money and I had paid up a lot for these sneakers. However, I already knew that they were going to sell and also they only flipped within a couple of days. I was really hoping for a 48 hour sale on these, but they sold just a bit after that. I was still happy with the sale because $83 in a couple of days is a really good flip for me. The third item that sold this month were a pair of hot pink Doc Martin sandals. These were a more rare style and honestly, these were so funky guys. I was so excited to find these. I sold these for $103 and I had paid $16 at the buy sell trade store for these, which means that I made $64.90 on these rare Doc Martin sandals. These for the transition to summer to fall, 
I just know that the buyer loves these. Oh, just such a great find for me, such a great find. The next sale here is my fourth best sale, and it was actually via online auctions. This was via an eBay auction, and I was so excited about this item. If you guys haven't watched my last video on how to online source, I totally would go and do that so that way you can snag some of these deals for yourself. But this dress sold for $140. It was a rare Reformation Dakota linen midi dress in perfect condition. I had paid $52 for this dress, which means that I had made $60 on this item. I actually wasn't sure how long I'd be waiting on this dress, but I knew it was a more rare style and it was not available online anywhere else. So when I'd gotten the offer for $140, I took it. After that, I had sold an August, if I'm saying that correctly, the label maxi dress. This was a floral, more bohemian maxi dress from them. This dress sold for $90 and I had paid $14 at the buy sell trade store for this, which means that I made a profit of $58 exactly on this. I loved this dress. Honestly, I think this was a size small, but it did not fit me whatsoever. I don't know why. I think it was built a little more oversized. Otherwise, I would have kept this for myself because I loved it. I did not know that August the label was a bolo brand until I had found it. Absolutely obsessed with it, and I'm so, so happy with the sale. Sale number six in this list is a home item. These were a set of Pottery Barn plates. These I found in my local Goodwill and they had sold for $88. I had paid $13 in the store for them, so that made my profit after fees $55.90. I'm forgetting what style exactly these are right now, but these were a gorgeous set of plates. These were eight plates in the set. I probably should have split them up into four and four, but I didn't think about that before I sold them, so they're all wrapped up now and ready to go. But two of these plates had chips, and I will say that they were a bit worn, but because of how many there were in the set, these were a great deal for the person that bought these. Up next is a Rails piece. Rails had really been popping off for me this past month. This was a Angelina mini dress from them, and this had sold for $78. I paid $9 for this at the buy sell trade store, guys. $9 and I made a 53.40 on this sale on Poshmark. So this was a great one for me. I did not expect this to sell that high. Um, these kind of striped rails pieces can be super oversaturated and this one had only been up for about two days. But I guess when I used the offer to likers function, they just really liked it and they bought it right away. So I was excited and surprised about the sale. I didn't expect it to sell that fast, but it was a really good flip. After that was a Jenny Yu floral maxi dress. I sold this one for $80 and I had paid $15 in another buy sell trade store for this. This was such a great find. Again, I was obsessed with this when I found it and I actually have another piece from them at the bins that I have yet to list. So I need to get on that one. But this made me $49 exactly and this sold within one day. This was a super quick sale for me and this is because it kind of looks like a bridesmaid piece. Um, wedding and bridesmaids dresses are going very fast right now. Poshmark so if you have any of those lying around I definitely would list those. After that this is no surprise but I sold a pair of Lululemon pants. These were the Black Dance Studio Pant 3. Um, I had actually picked these ones up in a buy sell trade store as well. They had listed them at $15 and I went around and flipped them for $78 which means that I ended up making $47.40 on these pants. I was super surprised about these but when I looked at the comps on them they looked really good so anytime I'm finding Lululemon under $18 now I've been picking it up. And the last sale that I want to share with you guys today that was good was this Barefoot Dreams cardigan. You guys know that I found this in the bins. This cost me only $2 at the bins and I ended up selling it for $61. That means that I made $45.30 on this item. This was just so cozy, so cute for the fall time here. And again, for that transition from summer to fall, I really like the fun colors in this item. But as always, I can't show you my best sales without showing you some of my worst sales because I feel like a lot of resellers really don't share that aspect of their reselling business and it is a reality. You know, I always have some bad sales during the month and for these ones in particular, I kind of just had to suck it up because I know that I just want to get these items moved and if they set for a while, I really don't want to be sitting on them any longer. So that was the case for most of these items here. So the first item was an all Phoenix sports bra. 
thought this was new with tags. I actually had bought this online wholesale, and again, if you want to go watch that online video, go and check that out. I really was not well versed in All Phoenix, the brand, but also I really didn't understand how online wholesale worked and how much I should be paying for things at this point. I was paying $16.50 for the sports bra and a lot of all other items, and it only sold for $20. This means that after fees, I lost $2 on this item, but it had been sitting around for over a year. So I thought it was time just to give up the sale already because I would rather lose that $2 and sit on the item any longer. I probably could have made this money back somewhere else, but you know, this was the only item that I lost money on this past month and I was okay seeing it go. My second worst sale this past month was this pair of Steve Madden wedge stinkers. I have been having these sit in a mystery box for quite some time in my closet until I just decided that I was going to sell the items myself. These had damage on them when I had gotten them. This was also part of that same lot that was online wholesale. Um, these were really in style at the time, but now they're not as hot. So I ended up selling these for $25 when I had paid $16.50 for them. So that means I made a profit of $2 on this sale. And you know, again, I'm happy to see it go. It was taking a broom anyway. The last sale that was really poor for me this past month was right at the beginning of the month. And this was a Lulu's Peplum blouse. This was terrible. I will say the photos I had taken for these in my college dorm room were awful and the lighting was really, really bad. So when I had taken these, everything was really, really dark and gray in these. So this I actually ended up picking from the bins and it sold for $9. So for an average price of $2 for everything I got at the bins that day, I only made $3.70 on this sale. That's okay, but truly I don't want to be making $10 or less on the items that I'm selling because that means that the average price that I'm getting paid per hour for sourcing these items, shipping them out, doing everything that I'm do currently doing is lower than it normally would be. So sales like this, I don't tend to make anymore. Um, and you know, we're going to be talking a little bit as to what my average sales price was like this past month. But this was one sale that I would say was my fault when I was sourcing it. Lulu's glasses don't go as well as their dresses do. But now what you guys want to know, my numbers. August was a successful month for me, I will say, but there are a few things I think that needed some working on. I will be using my reseller spreadsheet to track all of my sales and my monthly numbers, and I'll be showing you guys that today. So if you want to go and snag it for yourselves, I'll leave the link for that down below. Okay, so my first goal for this last month was to raise my average sales price. This was not successful. So if you guys already watched my video from last month, my average sales price is around $36 and I wanted to raise it to $40. I thought this was super attainable, especially since I already had some consistency built in, but actually my average sales price lowered. So my average sales price for August was $28.40. And there were a few reasons for this. Um, one was because I had a lot of old items sitting from the bins that haven't sold for me that I would rather have seen go to good homes. So I just took low offers on those. But also another thing that really lowered my average sales price this month were my consignment items. So a new thing that I wanted to try this past month was consigning for people. And I had already done the math behind this that if I was making about $25 an item and I sold however many and I was working so many hours, I could make an extra $1,000 per month. All of that math is something that I'm not too confident sharing right now on the internet, but it's something that I'll look to in the future. And you know, I do like consigning for people, but using the flip app was actually very difficult for me and I did not like how it worked. So I'm going to be explaining some of the payment structures and why I didn't enjoy selling on flip. First thing, the payout structure. So there are two ways that you can buy from someone to resell on the flip app. You can either do a straight buyout or you can do a consignment fee um, so you can kind of split the profits. So I chose the consignment fee where it's 50-50. This I should have thought through more, um, but also I want to explain a little bit about the dynamics between the clients that I got. Some of them were really good, but some of them were bad. I've only gotten five clients, guys, and I'm surprised that I already saw some of the things that I did on this app. So like I said, I did the 50-50 structure where the customer was getting paid 50% and I was getting paid 50%. But there's a catch. This is before the fees on the platform that you're selling on. So for Poshmark, there's a 20% fee and you have to take out the customer's earnings before that fee. So technically, I was only getting 30% of that sale cost. 
I'm already going to say this is not a lot per hour and I was not getting paid my hourly wage that I would be otherwise reselling. So I'm just gonna put that out there. If you've been thinking about taking other people's items on flip, you're not going to get paid a lot. I'm just gonna say for any full-time reseller, I would avoid this at all costs unless you're getting the more premium lots. Um, but for anything else, I would say absolutely not. So some things that I saw within the app, the first thing was a client asking me if I could only take 35% of the earnings. I stood my ground and I said, absolutely not. I would be making way less than a minimum wage. And so I kind of explained that and I explained it as nicely as I could within the comments. I know that the customer wants the best price for their item, but if you're asking a reseller to resell your items, I just think that that is extremely rude um, because they're doing all the work for you. So I would have gotten paid 15% of those earnings. And I would not recommend you guys use this app if someone is asking you that already. So that was the first thing. Um, the second thing was people sending me unsupported brands. So the app has specific brands that they want you to send in to try to monitor how much a reseller is getting per item. So any lower tier brands are not accepted. I ended up getting so many mistagged brands and I had to explain to the client that I could not take these brands. And number one, there was some resistance to that. Um, like you can sell it, whatever. I'm like, no, I can't. Like, it's so rude to like send people something that number one, isn't supported, but number two, they were expecting something else. So it, it was just beyond, it was just beyond me. So, and I'm not trying to complain about people sending me free inventory, but when you're getting so many issues with something that you already had kind of narrowed down your process for, you're getting paid way less for, and it's more of a struggle. Um, it gets frustrating. It really gets frustrating. So then going back into the payment structure, if I'm making a $40 sale, which is rare, if I'm making a $40 sale, the customer is getting paid about $20, whereas I'm getting paid 12. That's ridiculous, number one, but most of my items were actually selling under $10. So I literally am getting paid dollars for work that's taking me hours. I would not recommend any reseller do this unless, again, you're getting the more premium lots. I don't think that this is exactly fair. Either raise the 50-50 percentage, but then you also won't get as many lots. It's just, it's mind-blowing to me. Overall, I did not enjoy my experience consigning with the app. I enjoyed consigning as a whole, but I really will only be doing it for high-end items in the future that resell really well because, you know, I do want to give my clients a really good experience. I want them to get paid more than they would on ThreadUp or the Real Real or whatever. But for this app in particular, I think it's a lot of garbage that people are sending into resellers after they've already tried to resell it themselves. So yeah, I would not recommend it and I am no longer going to be consigning this way. Again, I will retry it in the future with something else but I will not be doing it with Flip anymore. Now, the moment you guys have been waiting for, what my numbers look like. So I have my computer here and I'm going to be screen recording all of this for you guys. So if there's a glare, I'm sorry here. But my numbers were consistent with last month's still. So I got paid a total profit of $3,152.16 before taxes. This was still really good. So this is what I was looking to do was be consistent around that 3K mark because that's exactly what I need to be able to pay my bills and all of my necessities. So this was a really good sign for me that I was doing the right thing and that I could be consistent with reselling. I had ended up making 127 sales on Poshmark and only one sale on eBay. Like I said, my average sales price was down, but again, I still thought that this was really consistent with last month's numbers and that I could keep doing full-time reselling. My thoughts on this past month were that sales were slow. I will say I was not listing as much certain days and I think that that had something to do with how slow my sales were and how inconsistent offers were coming in. So I think this next month, consistency is gonna be key on me listing every single day and not doing large listing days because that's usually what I do is do about 30 listings every other day instead of doing 15 every day. So a little bit more about that later, but sales were slow. Um, but the other thing is that I got a lot of low offers and because I was doing the consigning thing, um, all of those offers were consistently lower than my average. So again, I don't think that I'll be continuing consignment, um, but also I'm gonna be focusing on a lot more high income pieces. 
Overall, I'm still super proud of this last month and how reselling has been consistent for me. I think that this consistency is good because that really gears me up for this next month and what I wanna do. So my September goals are huge, guys. I'm realizing that there's a lot of value in consistency and that I've really been spreading myself thin. I love making videos for you guys, so I'm going to continue doing that. But one thing that I'm going to be cutting out is cross-listing on all platforms. So one thing that I wanna do, you know, I have a huge presence on Poshmark. Poshmark is my main listing platform and I've really gained a lot of insight into how it works, how the SEO works, um, everything like that, which is why I feel so good about sharing my knowledge with you guys. But eBay has been luring in the back of my mind for so long now and you know I do cross list over there but it's very inconsistent. I don't think that their algorithm really knows how much traffic to be pushing to my store. So I did open up an eBay store. I'm paying the basic minimum one for about five dollars a month and I'm going to be trying that one out this past month to see if I can gain knowledge and to start you know establishing myself on that platform. So this might seem a little bit lofty to you guys, but my goal for this next month is to be consistently listing 15 items a day on Poshmark while cross-listing items that are $30 or more onto eBay. And I'm going to be doing about 12 to 15 a day on that. Usually my average sales price is so high that everything will be over $30 already, but I've kind of done the math behind that and that seems to be the sweet spot for eBay. This might seem like a really lofty goal to some of you, but I do think that it's possible. I want to earn an extra 2K on eBay. If I am able to do that, this, or even if I'm not able to do this, but I make a substantial leaps into that direction, I know that I'll be heading into the right space and we'll have a lot more information to share with you guys as to how eBay works, how the algorithm works and everything like that to start establishing myself on that platform. Right now, I'm not gonna be focusing on Mercari because again, I think the flips on there are a little bit lower, but I might cross list my old consignment items on there, but that is my last priority. I also will hopefully have an exciting announcement at the end of this month that will really transform my business. So be on the lookout for that. Um, but even so, I just have a lot of exciting things coming up at the end of this month for my reselling business that I really wanna focus on this next month to start bringing in higher profits for the end of the year. So those are kind of my goals as to what I'm working on right now and what I'll be doing every day to be consistent and to establish myself on both Poshmark and eBay. If you guys like this video, please be sure to give me a little thumbs up down below to support my channel and be sure to be subscribed. I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.